If you're building a website where you're loading all of your data at one time, you're probably doing it wrong. You could be wasting valuable time and resources on data that your user is never even gonna look at. So let's talk about how to fix this using pagination in JavaScript. So here's an example of what you don't wanna do. On this site, it's loading a bunch of data and you can kind of load a long, long time. But the reality is that users are probably not gonna scroll through that many items. So some of that information, they're probably just going to ignore because they're click off or get distracted or whatever. But also there's really big performance implications of inside of here, what I'm doing is loading 100 images all at once, which is gonna slow the site down and hurt the user experience for the user that comes. So what we'll do is walk through a diagram of what pagination is and how it works. And then I'll show you a couple of different examples of how to incorporate this into a project that you build. So let's move over to our diagram and let's start with the idea of working with products. So I am building a demo project with the dummy JSON API for products. And they have a couple of different things that you can do and they show you the output of what they give you. So inside of here, they return an array of products. Each one has an ID and a title, description, image, et cetera. We're not using all of that information. We're just kind of using a few pieces in here, but the idea of making a request to a products uh, API is kind of what the focus is. So if we wanted to load all of our products, typically what this would be is some sort of API request to an endpoint that is slash products. This is going to return an array of, you guessed it, products. And the problem is you end up in a situation like this, where you're loading and displaying all of these products when you only need however many at a time, maybe 10 at a time. So how do you go from getting all of these to just getting a subsection of this? Well, one of the things that you can do if we scroll down here is to pass a limit parameter. So in here, we're passing limit as a query parameter. It's right inside of the URL. And so we're going to slash products and then question mark and then limit. So limit now is a key value pair with the key of limit and then a value of 10. And what this says is as I'm asking for these products, just give me the first 10 products. Only give me 10 products in the thing that you return to me. So this will help speed up our website because we're not loading 100 images, for example, or 1,000. We're just loading 10. We're also now optimizing for the user to say, hey, we, you're probably not going to make it through all of these. So why don't we just go ahead and show you some? And if you need more, we'll get more. So then the question becomes, if we pass in this limit parameter of 10, how do we then get the next set of 10? So after the user has viewed 10 of these, how do we get that next set? Well, if we scroll down a little bit more, we can introduce an additional parameter called the skip parameter. So this is a combination of two query parameters that we pass to our product's endpoint. And the two query parameters are, one is limit. So limit is basically the page size. How many do I wanna see at a time? And then the skip is basically an offset. Now, someone actually mentioned on Twitter, they're more familiar with the term offset than skip. I think these can be used more or less interchangeably, but basically what this says is, okay, I wanna skip the first X number of things of products in this case. So I wanna get 10 products, but I wanna skip the first 10, the second 10, et cetera. So in this case, what this does is this specifically is skipping the first 10 and then getting 10 more. So if we were to update this to be skip zero, this is going to get the first 10. If we pass in a skip of 10, we get the second 10, 20, we get the third 10, et cetera, et cetera. So in this case, our skip is used as an offset to say, don't give me the first X number, give me the 10, the set of 10 based on the limit after that. So if we go down one more time and kind of scroll through in here, there's a little bit more information around this. So we can look at for page one of something, we're gonna make a request to limit of 10, skip of zero. Page two is gonna be limit of 10, skip of 10. Page three is gonna be limit of 10, skip of 20, et cetera. And you can kind of abstract this into a formula. And the formula is gonna be for our skip, how do we calculate this skip? Well, it's gonna be the current page that we're on. So are we on page one, two, three, up to X? What page are we on? And we take that page and we subtract one from it. So on page one, one minus one is zero, and then zero times the number of items that we want to have in each page, which in this case is our limit. So our skip would be page minus one times the products that we want to see per page. So on the first page, it would be one minus one is zero, times zero says don't skip any. On the second page, two minus one is one, times products per page is 10, so skip the first 10 and so on. 
So that's how you can kind of do the calculation of how many posts do I want to get, which is our limit or post products per page. And then what page am I on by calculating our skip value to pass to an API, specifically in this case, this dummy data rest API that you'll have a link to follow or to find in the description below. Now, really quickly, if you're getting value out of what we're doing, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video. That will help me with the algorithm, but will also help you to know when I create more videos, which is once or twice a week on web development related topics. So make sure to do that to find more with JavaScript fundamentals. And if you have any requests for additional videos that you'd like clarification and details on, let me know in the comments below as well. So that's kind of the idea behind all of this. Let's actually dive into some of the code. Now, inside of this sample code that I'm gonna show you, I'm using a framework called Astro, but inside of the code, you'll see I'm just using kind of vanilla JavaScript in here inside of a script tag. So this is one of the beautiful things about Astro is you have the ability to use components and things. You have the ability to use what looks like just raw HTML, but inside of this, we can also additionally add a JavaScript script tag and add some things in there as well as our CSS styles. So this is already configured for me with just a new Astro project if you wanna check it out. This also gives us a live reloading server so we can show these differences as we go through it. So if we take a quick look inside of the code here, inside of the script tag, or actually we'll start with our markup. We have a title, we have a link card grid, and this is just basically a collection of the different products that we're going to display. And then we have a load more button. And if we look at this to start, this is loading all of these different products to the point where we can scroll all the way to the end of this, which is a long way down. And you'll see we have our load more button. So what we wanna do is just start by showing 10 and then be able to go get the next 10 later on. So if we look inside of the URL that I'm using, I have two different URLs that I will swap between. One is the all products URL. And in this case, I'm setting the limit to a thousand. So typically if I just wanted all of them, I would just do this. But with this specific API, we have to do um, specify the limit to something high. So this is a high limit to show that we're not, we don't want to get all of these things. And then inside of here, we also have a paginated URL, which does exactly what we just talked about, where we have slash products, but then we pass in a limit and then a skip. So again, if we look at what the page is loading now, this is loading all of these products and we can start to update this by making a fetch request to the paginated URL. Now I'm keeping track of the post per page variable and the page variable. So post per page is four. And so what this should do is it should load four posts or use that as our limit to load four posts. And then notice in here, I calculate our skip based on page minus one times post per page. This may need to actually be in parentheses as well. So we have our post per page and our skip. And if we come back to our application and just it automatically refreshes and scroll down, you'll see we have four of these built in. And then we can click our load more button and it loads in now four more of these and we can load more and more, et cetera. It would be interesting in a future video if you're interested in this to figure out how to automatically handle this by when the user is scrolled to the bottom of the page, like something like Twitter. So if you're on Twitter, they show you a list of posts, you scroll to the bottom and it automatically goes and refetches the next section. In this case, we're using a manual button, but you could do this automatically by detecting the user scroll. So one thing we didn't mention though, is how are we keeping track of which page we're on? Well, in this case, when we click our button, we also increment that page variable. So we start off with a page of one as a default value. And then when we click this button, this is going to increment that now to two. And now you see the second page of these things being displayed. So this is kind of a front end JavaScript way of doing pagination all on one given page but there's also another way to do this where we break out the different paginated sections of products or in this specific case that we'll see in a second of blog posts into their own different pages. So let's look at a different way that we could do this. So on my personal blog at jamesqquick.com slash blog, if we go to the more posts section, you can see we display two, four, six, eight, nine. And I think we take the featured post as 10, but in theory it grabs 10 posts at a time and it takes the first one and put it up here. So inside of here, I have maybe 100 posts on my website, but I'm only showing 10. And notice this URL is just slash blog, but what happens when I go to the next page is it actually changes the URL to slash blog slash 10. 
So what slash 10 or slash two, not 10, what slash two is, is basically a dynamic route parameter. And what Astro allows me to do is generate paginated pages for each of these different sections of my blog post. Now, because of that, I can then use these previous and next buttons to go back to slash blog slash one or forward to slash blog slash two slash blog slash three, et cetera. And we get the different chunks of paginated blog posts that we want. Now, the really cool thing is that Astro actually helps take care of a lot of this stuff for us, which is really nice. So we have the ability to export a function called get static paths. And what this does is it allows us to generate each of these different pages at build time and they're ready to go when the user requests them. So all of these pages slash blog slash three slash blog slash four, five, et cetera, all those things are already calculated and built at build time. And then when this request comes in, it just loads that information back. So Astro helps us do this by giving us this paginate function. And then they just give us the data that we can then reference to display inside of our application. Now I also have my pagination components in here and I basically pass in the next URL, which Astro gives us and the previous URL, as well as the current page and the last page. This allows us to do things like if I come back to the first page, notice that previous button goes away because we can conditionally show and hide those buttons if we actually have a next set or a previous set of paginated posts. So we've talked about two different ways that you can potentially do pagination. One is on a given page, you can do kind of the infinite loading part where you scroll to the bottom and then load more, something like Twitter, something like Facebook, Instagram, et cetera. And they also have that additional layer of fetching that next set of posts before you even get to the bottom. So you have kind of the infinite scroll. You also have the ability to do this based on the actual route of the website where you, in this case, we've already statically generated all of these pages. And so those pages slash one slash two, et cetera, are already built for us and available to us. Now, lastly, you could do something similar that we talked about before, and you can do this dynamically on the server by passing in a page value. So this is one additional option that you have where you could pass in a page query parameter, parse that in your front end JavaScript and use that to be able to decide which set of posts or products or whatever to bring and display to the user. So that's a few different ways to handle pagination in JavaScript. I used Astro as the example here because I'm a huge fan of it and it helps a lot with this type of stuff. If you're interested in learning more about Astro, I am releasing a course in the next two weeks. So by September 1st, I will release this course called Build Modern Websites with Astro. It's gonna be a ton of fun. We'll talk all about pagination and building a very complex blog and authentication and server side rendering, static rendering, all these things with Astro. It's gonna be a ton of fun. So you can check that out at astrocourse.dev. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments about pagination in JavaScript, let me know in the comments below. Thanks as always for checking out the video and I'll catch you next time.